Post free agent mock drafts have arrived. And one final ride as we are getting so close to April. The Carolina Panthers keep pounding nation. It's time. Let's get into this free agent mock draft discussion. And we're going to start off with the additions that they've got in free agency slash re-signs. And starting with the offense, Amir Smith-Marset, good special teams capability. You got David Moore coming over with Dave Canales. You got Yash Nyman in here from the Green Bay Packers. I like that move. I thought it was kind of a sneaky one. It's good to have a swing tackle. Always important. You're only as good as your backup, especially with this team dealing with so many injuries last season. I mean, except for the tackle position for the most part. Interior of the offense lens where they spent so much money. And I actually don't mind it. Of course, it's risky to spend almost like $90 million in guaranteed money on guard positioning. However, when you talk about Bryce Young and some of the limitations to see over the offensive line, I think the interior of the offensive line needs to be a priority. So I like the fact that they made that a priority in spending the money. To me, it is worth it. So Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis, let's just hope they can stay healthy because that was also a big part of the problem was they had so much uncontinuity if that's a word on the defense side of the ball Kavlon chase on dj woonham coming in as edge rushers while i don't feel confident in it, i do like woonham and, and chase on as a situational player they're gonna need help dj johnson we'll talk more about that in the with the roster point maybe jadavian Clowney. i know they're in talks with him and i expect them to at least bring in a veteran going into the season defensive line you got Ashawn robinson there's gonna be a mean mug and run block or run stopping unit there with Derek brown shy tuttle as well josie jewel nice linebacker signing and familiarity with josie Ju with uh, ej avero so i like that signing and it's a fair deal it's not super expensive and that leadership that he brings in is really invaluable i mean he'd be the green dot guy especially if shaq thompson still needs some time in secondary dane jackson solid signing i don't mind it he's in the prime of his career and you give him every chance to be a starter for this team i mean he's gonna have to step up their secondary is definitely on the weaker side we're gonna have to address that when we get into it but and then nick scott and jordan fuller nice two signings there and both dudes i think are gonna fit fine in their in the scheme and jordan fuller i imagine would be the starter with xavier woods and nick scott as a good rotational player get into the roster itself and kind of go in discussion more or less on what areas they need to target in the draft what are openings of course offensive line i think center is the clear void for me now austin corbett he's a really he's, he's a good offensive lineman when healthy of course and he's a smart dude i think he can handle the center position he can do what you need him to do to you know, recognize the blitzes and picks up you know doing what you need to do as a center position i don't have a problem with that with austin corbett what i have a problem with going back to nevada going or nevada however you say a part of me or going you know throughout his career in the nfl he has zero center experience so that is my only question is how does he transition in one off season still fully getting healthy those are big areas for me of concern so while he's got the talent and i do think he could handle the center position and he's being paid as a starter so i expect him to get a chance at that position i'm going to bring in some competition here everywhere else i feel really good about so you're locked in guard tackle you got your swing tackle as well you got depth on the guard position between Brady Christensen, Cade Mays, Chandler Zavala. And also people that are lined up in, in, in uh, orange are free agents in 2025. And then on to the wide receiving position, which this one gets talked about a lot. I actually think they've got their starting three wide receivers out here. So this to me maybe doesn't become like you have to take one in the second round with one of those picks. I do think it's a need because you only have two wide receivers on a contract next year and whether or not Deontay Johnson gets that extension is going to depend on how he thrives with Bryce Young how he plays in the scheme Dave Canales etc Adam Thielen is under contract however he could retire he's going to be like 35 36 something like that next season Jonathan Mingo will be around going into year number three next year so your hope is Mingo is one of your guys going forward after that, though, a lot of uncertainty because everybody else besides Thielen is a free agent. And as I was saying, he could retire. So receiver is definitely a need. It's something that you have to get at least in the mid-round range in this draft. But it could be setting up for more of a first-round situation next year for this Carolina Panther team, especially with other needs on the roster. And then at tight end, this to me is almost a bigger priority of a need because Tremble, while he did play better this season, there's no doubt. He stepped up as a receiver. He's a good blocker, and that's another thing. Like, he's going to fit right in in Dave's system. Like, he's a really good blocker. You got Ian Thomas, who's taking another pay cut, so I like that. Steven Sullivan, you know, not a bad receiving option. You know, a good backup rotational player. But all these guys are free agents. So no matter what, for me, it is an investment. It is something that they need to invest in, whether it's even a day three pick 
early, you know, you could look at it with a day two pick. I don't think it's an early day two pick, mainly because of this draft class. But in round three, I'm okay with it. It's 65. It is an option. There are, might be a couple of guys that are on the table. And then on to the running back room. I feel really good about the running back room. It's fine. I mean, I wouldn't call it an elite running back room. You could definitely add somebody to the room. However... I think Chuba Hubbard is in line for a way better. I mean, he was good last season, but I think he could have a career year with this improved offensive line. So I wouldn't shock me if he runs for 11, 1,200 yards. I think that's very much in the possibility. I think Dave Canales is going to prioritize running the football as well. Miles Sanders getting healthy this year as a number two. I'm okay with that, right? And you got Raheem Blackshear competing for a third spot with Mike Boone. So they brought him back. I feel confident this room isn't is not in a bad position going into the season. So it's not something we have to look at in this draft. It could be, right? You could upgrade, but I don't think it's this year's type, type of need. Quarterback, not a need. I'm higher on Bryce Young than, you know, I would say. Every, I mean, I really like Bryce Young. I expect him to get way, way better this season. Expect a lot of improvements, especially as we head into year three with Bryce Young. I think he could take a step into that top 10 range at some point by year three. I don't know. That's me. I'm really high on Bryce Young. I think at some point, he will get there. It's just a matter of time. On to the defense side of the ball and the defensive line. DJ Woonham, expect him to be one of your guys and he's under contract for the next two years. While the money's not crazy, it's not a guaranteed situation. So I, I still think that they could upgrade. Him and DJ Johnson for me competing now. I mean, Johnson will also compete for a starting position too with Chase on. So you've got that. This to me though is still a big time priority need. Like this is an area they have to upgrade in the draft. Free agency must concern for me like they need more edge talent after losing brian burns it is concern on to the interior defense line i feel good about it shy tuttle is going into a season where next year he could be cuttable you could save around seven eight million dollars so that is an option for them overall it's not that big of a concern you got some good solid depth as well with thurman and ray going into next year behind Derek brown that would be the big thing is just extending Derek brown overall their interior should be pretty much set it's just getting an edge rusher which is a huge need linebacker wise i see this as like a mid-round pick because shaq thompson injury of course coming off a major injury and he's a free agent in 2025 so for the future you got Josie Jewell who's that going to be that number two guy I'm going to try to find somebody in a coverage mold in that mid-round range at the cornerback position this is also an area of need Troy Hill's getting older now I don't know if he can really we can expect him to play a full season that's why I think this is a very much a day two need slash even a round two need this is a early priority for me getting somebody that maybe could play slot early on maybe be a long-term outside cornerback or at least be competition with Dane Jackson on the perimeter so that is my view on this you got DiCaprio Boodle who is really their backup uh, cornerback that I feel confident with we'll see if Deshaun J uh, Jameson can kind of fill that mold as a as a backup slot or hybrid guy he did play on the outside technically when he was out there last season overall I, this is an area we need to invest in no matter what safety room and this is a future need everybody in the room except for Jamie Robinson is a free agent so for me this is 100% we're gonna throw a pick at this this could be a mid-round need no matter what, we're going to be putting one pick in this room because we're going to need at least some depth. But hopefully a competition for the future to be a starter Jamie with Jamie Robinson. Woods, Fuller, Scott, all free agents cook as well. On to the draft, though. It is draft time for the Carolina Panthers. And my first pick at 33, it's going to be an edge rusher. I'm going Chris Braswell, edge rusher from Alabama. He is a really solid edge rusher. I don't know if he's going to be a true number one, but I think he can give you something of like a boy moth in what the Seattle Seahawks got in the second round. Very similar mold of player. Very athletic off the edge. He's got strong hands in the run game to shed and be a good solid edge defender in a 3-4. I very much see him as a 3-4 outside linebacker who can also drop into coverage when need be. Overall, a really solid player and somebody that you know knows how to get after the pass rusher with his hands now his counter you know i think he needs to work on his counters because sometimes you know when his first rush doesn't win he kind of just gets stymied and doesn't do a whole lot so that's something i want to see a little bit more with him and, and maybe what i was lacking when i was watching on film so there might be a little bit of developmental upside to his game that is still untapped but he's a very young prospect so definitely has time to mold into that guy on to round or the second pick in round number two Kamari Lassner, cornerback, Georgia. Another guy that I just, 
I'm telling you, I think he's going to be a good football player. I don't know if he's going to be a super high-end guy. He just doesn't have the elite athleticism. But he knows the game. He's such a high IQ player. He just has that feel, that innate feel that you want from a secondary player. And especially in Averro's defense, I think you can get away with that with the two high coverages and stuff like that. So get Kamari Laster in here. I think he can play in the slot early on for them and at least rotate in there with Troy Hill because of his run ferociousness and the, you know what he brings there in that department. Coming downhill, breaking up the screen game. He, he reads and reacts in a hurry. And his coverage instincts were made a big stride this season. He can play up at the line two in man coverage when they want to do that with Jay-Z Horn and him and on the outside. That would be a fun combination. And he's really good in zone coverage. I think his feel is phenomenal. On to round number three, Jatavian Sanders, tight end, hook him horns. We're going to go ahead and take that tight end piece, be that receiving option to go along with Tremble, who is a really good blocker and, you know, still untapped potential as a receiver. But I think Sanders gives you that receiver mold. And they need tight ends for the future. And I felt like the value made sense for me with Jartavian Sanders in the third round. Once again, a very young prospect, 21 years old, a lot of potential. I know he didn't have the fastest combine time, but I think his play speed is faster. So you get him in here to be another receiving weapon for Bryce Young. Then we go to Bo Limmer, Arkansas center slash guard, of course, giving that versatility, but I see him as a long-term center. At least give you some competition with Austin Corbett as more of a traditional center on the spot for the future. On to linebacker Maurice louis Fowl from Notre Dame. He gives me some of those... You know, I think he'd be a really good will linebacker. I think he's got the coverage instincts. He's really good in coverage. He's good as a blitzer. And I think he'd be a great phenomenal comparing with Josie Jewell. Good one-two punch. I feel like he's an underrated linebacker in this class and somebody I'm going to keep a close eye out on when where he lands. I'm a big fan. Not just because of the Troy Polamalu hair, maybe because of the Troy Polamalu hair. But yes, he is a fun player to watch. On to Jamari Thrash, wide receiver, Louisville. And we're going to take a kind of like a deep threat. He's also a decent route runner as well. Of course, the size you know, is not tremendous with him, so he is a certain type of player, but I think he's going to be a really, really nice deep threat for the team and definitely knows how to win vertically. And you get somebody in here and also has some special teams ability too. On to our final pick, Trey Taylor, Air Force. Why not go after the Air Force safety who has... You know, of course, Ed Reed, you know, he's related to Ed Reed, so that's always not a bad thing to say. Look, his film, there's limited film out there, what I have seen. He's a versatile player. He can play in the slot. He can play up top. He can do it all. And I think his balls, you know, his ball skills are, you know, not quite Ed Reed level, but he definitely has ball skills. He's learned, and he knows a thing or two for sure. And that versatility is well coveted, something that I, I think he'll be very, very nice addition special teams early on and maybe you can develop with Jamie Robinson as a safety on to the roster after the draft looking at everything we've been able to do offensive line we add in Bo Limmer to develop behind Austin Corbett or at least compete with Austin Corbett at that center position tight end we add in Jatavian Sanders who I feel like can be a day one starter and immediate impact maybe Tremble starts early on in the season but I think Sanders by mid-year could very much work for starting reps and, and be a good one-two punch right as Tremble as the blocker and then Sanders as the receiving threat and then wide receiver, we had in Jamari Thrash. Once again, this may not be, you know, appeasing to a lot of the Carolina Panthers mock drafts out there going receiver early. I understand that still. However, as I was saying, I think it's lining up to be a first round pick next year, depending on how Deontay Johnson plays, Adam Thielen retiring. You have Jonathan Mingle, who's a second round pick. We'll see. I'm just not ready to give up on him either. So overall, I, it's why I lean towards other positions of I felt like there were greater needs this year, such as the edge rush, Chris Braswell, getting somebody off the edge to pair along with DJ Woonham, DJ Johnson, Kavlon Chason, Amari Barno, and maybe a veteran too, which I still think they need to bring in a J. Davian Clowney as your rotation of three, four guys. Cornerback Kamari Lassner will be, a, I think, can be a day one starter right away in the slot and give you something like a Kyler Gordon, if nothing else. I mean, different players, but I think he can do something of that nature early on in his career, and I can see him hitting the field right away. So you get him in there with Dane Jackson and J.C. Horn. And Lassner, too, has been a you know really reliable corner, which you've had some issues with J.C. Horn. If He's, a, he's an elite corner. J.C. Horn's like a top 10 corner in the NFL if he can just stay healthy. 
play. Kamar Lastner has been reliable. Now, when you get to the NFL, you just never know, right? Injuries you can never predict, but Lastner has been really reliable, which is always good and something I was looking for. Linebacker-wise, we got Maurice Louifau from Notre Dame as a nice developmental coverage linebacker to go along with Josie Jewell for the future if you're, you know, Shaq Thompson is released after the season. And then safety-wise, Trey Taylor to be another development piece, if, if nothing else, a special teamer for the team with Jamie Robinson. So that is it for the Carolina Panthers mock draft post free agency. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree? What would you do differently? And I hope you guys have a really cool day. My name's G Slang. I'm doing my thing. We're ready to roll.